welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have some really fun summer DIYs for you. They are all watermelon themed and I will be making mine in a smaller size because I want to use them in my tiered tray, but they all could be made larger if you want to just use them around your house in your summer decor. So we'll jump right into those, but I do want to let you know that you'll want to stick around because later on in the video, I will be sharing some exciting channel news with you, and I'll also be announcing the winner of the June Dollar Tree Mystery Box giveaway. So now, let's get crafting. For this first project, I will be using this small palette sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint the bottom slat with a dark green, it's kind of a forest green, and then I am going to paint the top three slats using a red. Next I'm going to take a kind of sage green color and I'm going to paint just a little line across the top of that green slat and then I am going to paint some kind of squiggly lines down uh, vertically on that to kind of look like the watermelon rind. I'm going to write sweet summertime on my sign so I'm just penciling that in and then I'm going to use an Arteza paint marker. I will link these in the description box below. I think these are really uh, easy to use and so I'm just using the white paint marker and I'm going over where I penciled in those words. And now I'm going to take the black paint marker and I'm going to just draw some little teardrop shapes on for the watermelon seeds. And now I'm going to give mine a little bit of a farmhouse touch with this black and white check ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm going to tie just a simple bow and glue that up in the top left corner. Then to help this stand up a little bit, I'm using a couple of the tumbling tower blocks. I'm just going to glue those along the bottom of those vertical pieces on the back side just to give it a little bit more width uh, so that it will stand up a little bit more stable. For this project, I'm going to be using this burlap messenger bag from Dollar Tree. And if you can't find this, you can just use some burlap fabric from a fabric store. So I'm just going to pull the handle out and it's a pretty nice handle and I think I'll be able to use this for some other projects. So I'm definitely going to keep it after I trim it off. So I had this little circular sign sitting nearby. I grabbed it just to use as a guide to trace out the curve of the bottom of my watermelon slice. A bowl would also work well for this. Then I'm going to use a ruler to draw some straight lines to make a triangle shape and then I'm going to cut through both layers of the burlap so that I have two triangular pieces with a curved bottom. Now because this burlap is a pretty loose weave, I decided to glue my burlap triangles onto some craft paper to give it kind of a lining. You could also use felt or another type of fabric for this. And 
and then I'll just go ahead and cut those out as well. Now for all of my projects today I'm using the same three colors of paint. I'm using this forest green from Americana and I got these all at Walmart and these are a new brand of chalk paint that they're carrying instead of Waverly. And I got that in the sage green and the ruby red. So I'm just using a kind of an old paintbrush and, and kind of stippling or uh, pouncing the paint on this so that it gets down into the burlap and uh, I'm going to do the dark green first then I'm going to do a row of the lighter sage green and then I'll paint the rest red and this is supposed to look rustic so it doesn't need to be covered perfectly it can be kind of splotchy and it totally works for this and I am painting both pieces exactly the same. So once those are dry, I'm going to come in with my black Arteza acrylic paint marker and uh, draw the seeds on these as well. Now you could use a Sharpie marker for this and I think it would work just as well. And now I'm going to put the two paper sides together and I'm going to use my hot glue gun and go just right along the very edge and glue these together. Now I am going to leave one side open because I am going to put a little bit of filler in this to give it some dimension. And since some of the best craft supplies are free, I am using a Dollar Tree shopping bag as my stuffing for this. And I'm going to put this inside. It's the perfect size. And then I am going to use the hot glue gun and seal up that edge. And I didn't get mine lined up quite perfectly, so I'm just trimming it a little bit, and then it's all finished. For this next project I will be using 30 wooden beads. These are from a garland that I got after Christmas on a clearance sale, uh, but you can get them on Amazon or at any craft store and I will put a link to some on Amazon if you want to check out those. And so I'm going to show you a really easy way to paint these. And so I am using a Ziploc bag and I'm going to add a little bit of my paint to the bag and I'm just using a paintbrush just because I felt like this would be a little less messy than trying to pour it into the bag. And then because I want my beads to be almost more like a stained look instead of a painted look, I want the wood grain to show through so I am going to add just a little bit of water to the bag and uh, just mix that around inside the bag and then I'll add my beads to the bag and zip it up and then just shake them around and make sure they're all coated really well and then I'll uh, just pour those out on a paper towel and let them dry. And I'm doing 10 beads in each of the colors so 10 light green, 10 dark green, and 10 red. And I love this method for painting these wooden beads because it keeps your hands so much cleaner and then you can just toss that baggie when you're done. And it's way faster than painting each bead individually. 
So next I'm going to take this twine from Dollar Tree and I'm going to make a tassel. And I'm sure there are many ways to make them. This is just the way that I do it. I am going to wrap the twine around my hand uh, about 20 times and then I'm going to uh, snip off the end. Then I'm going to cut a piece of twine that's more than double the length that I am making my uh, little bead garland and I'm going to put that through the center of my twine and then I'm going to lay another piece of twine underneath and this is what I'm going to use to tie off the top of my tassel so this piece of twine is about eight inches just so it's easy to work with I'm going to tie that in a tight knot around the top of the tassel it's about uh, I don't know a half to three quarters of an inch down and I just tie that really tight and trim off the ends Next I'm going to take the two ends of the really long piece of twine and tie that in a knot on the top of the tassel. And then I'm going to cut the bottom of my tassel apart so that it makes the little fringes and I just trim it up so it's nice and neat. <laughs> Is fringes a word? I don't know. Anyway. Now I'm going to thread my beads onto the long piece of twine that's coming out of the top of the tassel. And I was getting a little worried that my piece of twine coming out of the top of my tassel was not going to be long enough for the amount of beads I wanted to use. So make sure that you have enough uh, twine coming out of the top of the tassel so you have plenty left over. For this last project, I will be recycling this Smucker's Jam Jar, and you could use any type of small jar for this, or a big jar if you want to, but I am going to first get all of the sticky stuff off of the jar. I'm using this Goo Gone that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and seriously, I have had this bottle for several years and I still have a ton of it left. A little bit goes a long ways, but it works really well to get adhesive and sticky stuff off of uh, your projects when you remove labels. And once I got all of that adhesive off, I did wash this in hot soapy water to get the oily residue off and then dried it really well. Now since I'm going to be painting this with my acrylic paint, I'm going to give it a coat of this satin spray paint first. This will just help the acrylic paint and the chalk paint to adhere to the glass better. And once that spray paint is dry, I'm going to take my red chalk paint and I'm going to paint down the jar about two thirds of the way. And then I'm going to paint the dark green along the bottom of the jar 
and then once the green and the red have dried I'm going to paint the lighter sage green um, in between the red and the dark green. And I'm not worried about getting a nice straight line. If you want your lines to be straight you could tape off the jar so that you can get those nice clean lines. And now I'm going to add those vertical kind of squiggly lines down uh, on that dark green stripe all the way around the jar. And I did do two coats of paint on the red, the sage green, and the darker green, but I'm just doing kind of a light single coat of paint on these stripes because I want the green, the dark green, to show through them a little bit. To paint the seeds, I am using some black acrylic paint and a really small paintbrush, and I'm going to paint on the seeds. You could use a Sharpie marker again for this. I just felt like painting them, so that's what I did. Now I could have left the seeds just the way they were, but uh, something that I have found that really kind of gives things just a little bit more um, dimension and just that finishing touch is to add just like a little highlight. And I'm doing this by using some ivory colored chalk paint and my really small paintbrush, and I'm adding just a little line of paint on one side of each seed and I'll show you up close here in a minute so you can see but it really just brings it to life and gives it kind of a, a more realistic look maybe or just uh, gives it a, a kind of a highlight. This step is totally optional it's just a little extra that I like to add. And then when everything is dry, I'm going to give it a couple of light coats of this clear matte sealer. This will help the paint stay on well and not scrape off. And to finish it up, I'm going to tie a piece of the black and white check ribbon around the top. And I didn't want it to be real wide, so I folded it in half and just tied that around and tied a little knot. And then I tied a simple little twine bow and glued that with a little bit of hot glue right on the front of that black and white check ribbon. So you may have noticed at the beginning of my video that my logo is a little bit different. It now says Love and Life's Journey DIY. And the reason for that is because I have actually started a second YouTube channel. And before I tell you about that channel, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory and maybe it'll help you uh, understand why I did this and why I did it the way I did. But about four years ago, not quite four years ago, I started my YouTube channel. It was going to be just a lifestyle vlog, travels, family, just all the things. And uh, so I did put some DIYs on there because I like to do crafts and DIY projects. And so I put those on there. And there was one video in particular that I put up fairly early on that was my Dollar Tree Christmas lamp post video and uh, it just took off and it took me from 132 subscribers to over 7,000 in less than a month and so I gained a lot of subscribers who were really looking for the Dollar Tree DIYs, the budget DIYs and so I started doing some more of that content and my channel just really started to grow. 
And so I thought, that's cool. I love doing DIYs. I'm just going to keep doing that and just kind of make this a DIY channel. And so that's what happened. Um, so when I originally picked the name Love in Life's Journey, it was going to be like all the things, you know, all of our life's journey. And it kind of didn't really turn out that way uh, for this channel. And it became more of a DIY channel. So uh, I've decided that I want to keep the DIY channel the way it is. I love doing the DIYs and sharing those with you. And so I have just added DIY to the end of the name. And that will be this channel, Love and Life's Journey DIY. And then I have started a second channel that is just called Love and Life's Journey. And that is going to be all the things. That's going to be about our family. It's going to be um, about life in Idaho. It's going to be our travels and just whatever comes up that I feel like vlogging or putting on there because I really do enjoy doing the vlog style videos as well and so uh, I didn't want to incorporate those on this channel for a couple of reasons um, just real quickly because one I think my audience is more just wanting the DIYs on this channel the majority of of the people who subscribe want just the DIYs and so I want to keep that and respect that and also it's not great for my channel to mix a bunch of other things in with the DIYs um, as far as the YouTube algorithm goes I think it kind of confuses it and as far as like promoting it and suggesting my videos so I just decided to make a separate channel so I am going to put the link up here in the up here or here <laughs> up in the corner um, in the card so that if you want to go and subscribe to that channel and follow Chris and I on that we will be sharing just like I said all kinds of things and we're starting out with our 30th anniversary trip to Florida there are already a couple of videos on that uh, channel that you can watch from our vacation our trip to Florida so um, head on over there and subscribe and watch and I'd love to see you over there I'd love to uh, connect with you there and uh, it, I think it's just gonna be a lot of fun and so now it's time to announce the winner of the Dollar Tree mystery box giveaway and if you are new to my channel and you don't know what this is every month I give away a mystery box full of mystery items from Dollar Tree these are the things that are typically a little harder to find I try to kind of gather some of those up and put them in a mystery box and I just choose a random comment from my Dollar Tree haul video because I do one of those every month and that's the video that you would enter on and so for the June Dollar Tree haul video I'm going to choose a comment I'm just going to do that randomly with a um, comment chooser chooser picker tool a random comment picker tool a random comment generator tool I don't know what to call that an online tool that selects a comment randomly <laughs> and the winner of the June Dollar Tree mystery box is Deborah Springers congratulations Deborah so here are all my items on my tiered tray. I am so happy with how these came out and how they all look together. I added some paper straws to that little jar and I found this watermelon and cilantro scented candle at Dollar Tree and added that. Of course I don't usually light the candles on my tiered tray but I do take the lid off so that the scent can um, kind of go throughout the room a little bit. Um, and because my tiered tray is on my dining room table I added this little home sweet home salt and pepper shaker that I made in a previous video I will link that in the description box below and then I thought this little local and fresh little creamer pitcher looked so cute that's from Dollar Tree and so I think it all came together really well and in the same video as the salt and pepper shaker uh, I, is this napkin holder that I made from some picture frames from Dollar Tree so uh, be sure to check that out if you're interested in those 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel in so many ways. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button for lots more DIYs to come. And also hit that bell and set your notifications so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. And we would love to have you follow us on our other YouTube channel. The link is in the description box below. So head over there if you would like to follow us for our family, lifestyle, and travel vlogs. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.